Welcome back everyone. Today we are asking what are some horrifying things to consider when thinking about aliens. I can't wait for this one. Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and the bell if you want to stay up to date with every video I do because I am doing them every single day. Aliens could do to us what we did to wolves, selectively breeding a once noble species in grotesque ways, transforming us into the equivalent of bulldogs, poodles, dachshunds, etc. That they could be massive, taller than buildings, and eat us like bacon strips, or step on us like ants. Imagine if one alien child fell onto our earth, stomped on all of us, started whining, and then kicked and screamed on the ground, all in a matter of seconds. His mama alien picks him up and they keep walking through space. Human civilization is decimated. It's possible that they are fat, single-cell organisms just loafing around. They're already here. Just like chilling on our eyebrows and shit, drinking mini space teenies. Cantina band music from Star Wars starts blaring from my eyebrows. The possibility of them already knowing about us, but us not knowing about them. We have no idea if they know. They could be committing space espionage right now and we wouldn't know about it. Yet across the gulf of space, intellects vast and cool and unsympathetic regarded our planet with envious eyes and slowly and surely drew their plans against us. Our human concepts of morality and empathy are heavily influenced by our mammalian biology. Imagine the aliens land, and instead of having nice little family units, their species lays clutches of thousands of eggs at a time. They don't form strong bonds. Life is essentially expendable for them. They see us weeping over a dead child, and they have literally no frame of reference for understanding why this would be upsetting. I'm not saying all aliens will be like this, but some definitely could be. A counter-argument would be octopuses. They are the most different form of intelligent life that we know of, and they don't seem to be that asshole-ish. Although, here we are with our supposed empathy, yet we eat them up. Very true. This reminds me of the dark forest theory. Like hunters in a dark forest, a civilization can never be certain of an alien civilization's true intentions. In summary, all life desires to stay alive. There is no way to know if other life forms can or will destroy you if given a chance. Lacking assurances, the safest option for any species is to annihilate other life forms before they have a chance to do the same. What a great trilogy. I strongly recommend it to every science fiction fan. We're so sorry. We can't protect you anymore. Okay, that one was, what, seven, eight words? Terrifying. Would be scary to imagine a starved, desperate race of beings that are trying to keep their world alive by any means necessary. I mean, if we're not careful, that sort of sounds like us in a few generations. One theory from Stephen Hawking is that if they are sufficiently advanced, the aliens may treat us like ants. When we build dams, we don't worry about whether or not a dam will cause an anthill to be flooded out. Similarly, a species that is advanced as far beyond us as we are beyond ants might seek to alter our planet or even our solar system to their advantage without giving consideration to what may happen to us. Like to make way for a hyperspace bypass? Name that reference. For all we know, aliens might not be the little green men that fly around in flying saucers and destroy us with laser beams. They could be an interstellar pathogen that shows up one day and silently and effortlessly kills us all without warning. Our immune systems would have no idea what hit them. There was a book called Blind Sight that explores a cool idea of aliens where they're not your typical little green men. The premise is pretty much what if humanity is unique? What if intelligent life is common but sentience is not? That music, art, literature is a uniquely human trait. That space is filled with cold, emotionless, genius life. To me, that idea is kind of horrifying. At least, I think that's what the book was about. I'm not the best reader, lol. They might bully you. Earth is just the nerdy new kid in school. The assumption that they come in groups in some flying saucer, for all we know, they might just appear in hordes of thousands, if not millions, all across the planet. Also, we like to think that aliens will share the same way of thinking as humans, i.e. reasoning, emotions, etc. But the only reason we think that is because that's the only thing we are familiar with. Aliens might have completely different emotions or thought processes than us, but we won't know because we've never encountered them before. It's like the fourth dimension. At this point, it's pretty well established what it is, but most of us, if not all, have no clue how to visualize or properly explain it. 
Extremely unlikely, I know, but if aliens ever come to Earth, it likely means they are a spacefaring and interstellar capable species with tech at least centuries, if not millennia, ahead of ours. In other words, if aliens are even remotely capable of traveling to our planet, we're pretty much outgunned hilariously. I would rather be massively, massively outgunned than to be just a bit outgunned. If even our most powerful nukes are nothing compared to their technology, then we're not a threat. If we pose a potential danger to them, there's an incentive to eliminate us. The scariest thing to me is thinking that aliens want nothing to do with us. I don't get why everyone thinks that aliens will attack us immediately. It's one thing if we come into their territory, but if they stumble upon us, we're most likely safe. Them finding us would mean they are incredibly advanced. Anything they could get by attacking Earth, they could get far easier by harvesting it from a different planet in our solar system. Unless they feed specifically on brainwaves, it isn't worth the hassle to attack a planet teeming with life. They may have some weapons, however primitive, that might be used against you. It's far more frightening to believe that aliens have slash will one day discover us and won't be interested. They won't want us on their intergalactic councils. They won't want to give us medicine. They won't want to form any bond. If they decide to just leave humanity alone, that means either they have decided we are not worth saving or that we are too close to destruction to be worth the resources. Well, when you put it like that. What if it ends up the other way around? What if we end up being able to travel between the stars and we find some aliens that aren't as technologically advanced as we are? I could easily see us being imperialist invaders, committing the atrocities we've committed against each other on an entire species so we could have a second planet with an oxygen atmosphere and easily obtainable natural resources. That would be truly horrifying. I mean, would anyone be surprised at us being the monsters all along? Well, uh, I've got good news for the people who are wondering this. There's a movie out there called Avatar, which is literally what this person's just described. My main thing is that they'll bring a virus or something that will just wipe us out because we've never seen anything like it or we'll be immune because it's too alien. Who knows? But until there is actual proof that there are advanced aliens out there, I'll stick to the idea that they are bacterial cells on Titan or something. Maybe all these supposed alien abductions and UFOs over the past 100 years have been alien scientists building vaccinations against our known diseases for themselves and adapting their own medical immunities for humans too, monitoring our progress against their own diseases so when both civilizations are on top of it, we can be welcomed into the galactic fold safely. Maybe they just try and make sure everyone is safe and happy for galactic adventures with their new friends. Uh that one day they will just wipe out our planet without us ever knowing why and that it will be so fast we don't even realize it. That they don't actually exist. If there were no advanced civilization that can colonize other planets, that would mean that most of them go extinct before they reach that level of technological advancement, which means that we are probably doomed to extinction too. I think there could be a more positive outcome too. Maybe interstellar travel is too hard and instead they'd rather spend a utopia in some sort of mind upload thing, having alien sex and doing alien drugs. I'm hopeful that maybe it's because there's just more fun stuff to do than flying through dead space lol. Dead space lol. They can also come in different forms than we expect. You could have an alien made of sound waves or a microscopic alien. Or alien is the size of planets where it takes three seconds for their brain to send a message to their toes to wiggle them. Maybe they treat us like we treat pigs, cows and chicken. I've always thought that we would be more like monkeys to them and they would experiment on us. I've always thought. Uh oh, this one's becoming self-aware. Since life on this planet is one big cycle of eating other living things, plants and animals to survive, they might be so horrified that they press the big note button and end it all. Right? Imagine aliens that evolved on a planet where all life photosynthesizes. They see us and they're like, oh cool, a whole planet full of monsters. Exactly like how would a race of basically grass see Earth as a whole? Or if they are made of gas and they're like, oh my god, are they taking the air inside of themselves and then expelling carbon? I don't want to be carbon. These theories are just getting more and more crazy. The fact that they could pretty much see us as inferior life forms Thus, they could make us slaves, their food, or test subjects. It wouldn't be something personal, they would just look down on us like we would do with some ants. Not even worth it, changing the direction of a step to avoid killing. When scientists sent their message into the void, they never really expected to hear anything back. 
Decade after decade they spent listening to nothing but static. And then it came, the aliens message back. The pattern was unmistakable, but it didn't mean anything of course, not to us. We couldn't understand them. The frenzy to learn was real, but scientists knew that it would take months, if not years, to de-scramble the message into something we could understand. The aliens seemed to communicate on a frequency that humans cannot hear. The translation was a delicate process. World governments joined together in the effort. Billionaires pumped money towards the research like a river flows with water. Humanity could not stop talking about it. What are they trying to tell us? What do they look like? Are they friendly? Finally, after years of deliberation and study, we found it. The code to understanding this sacred frontier of intergalactic communication. It was a momentous occasion, and it seemed all of humanity gathered for the unveiling of the algorithm that would once and for all tell us what the spacemen were saying. In New York, crowds gathered around the monitor in Times Square. Traffic stopped to a halt. The city was silent. And then the man on TV hit the button that could change our world forever. Send nudes, the aliens said. We are only an intelligent species because we defined ourselves that way. Think of it, there is only a 1% difference in DNA between chimps and us. Meanwhile, the difference in intelligence is huge. We are exploring the cosmos with our advanced telescopes, meanwhile the smartest chimp is stacking up rocks. Now think of an alien species that has a 1% DNA difference with us lining the other way. Their simplest thoughts would be too complicated for us. The smartest person on earth would be like a chimp stacking up rocks for them. Now think of a species with another 1% difference. We wouldn't even be like ants walking on the floor to them. We would be less than that. And you could go on like that. 10%, 20%, 30%, etc. What would we be? So insignificant that no one in the cosmos would consider making contact with us? Is the truth of the cosmos on reality actually really simple, but we are just too stupid? Like expecting ants walking on a football field to understand what's going on on the field? Do we not know what we don't know? Dude. That they could have been here the entire time playing Farmville with us. Farmville, wow. That they found us, observed from a distance for the past 10 years or so, and had declared the planet a disaster area that nobody should ever visit. That it's already happened, that aliens came to Earth, destroyed what was already living there, and took over. That we, humans, had been the aliens. Imagine being an alien and not even knowing it. And I think realizing that we were the aliens after all is a good place to end it. Hope you enjoyed this one, guys. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and bell so you stay up to date with all of my daily videos.